Hello and welcome to today's presentation, The Legacy of Uncle Tom's Cabin, presented by the National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum, whose mission it is to honor anti-slavery abolitionists, their work to end slavery, and the legacy of that struggle, and strives to complete the second and ongoing abolition, the moral conviction to end racism. In the canon of great American literature, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin stands as one of the most powerful works of literature to have shaped American history. Published shortly after the passage of the controversial Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, Uncle Tom's Cabin, or Life Among the Lowly, published in 1852, revolutionized the way Americans perceived slavery. The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 required that runaway enslaved people be returned to their owners, even if they were captured in a free state. This act made returning runaways the responsibility of the government and of everyday residents of free states, whether or not they agreed with the practice of slavery. This caused great resentment in many Northerners, many of which did not have strong opinions of slavery before, but were now obligated, against their will, to uphold the institution in their own land. In response to this law, Harriet Beecher Stowe published her revolutionary book. Harriet Beecher Stowe came from a prominent religious family in New England. Her lineage was populated by avid abolitionists, supporters of women's rights, temperance supporters, and other social activists. Stowe herself was an avid abolitionist and sought to use her writings to expose the realities and horrors enslaved people lived through on a daily basis. The book is a sentimental novel and tells the story of the enslaved Uncle Tom, who is an upright and exemplary Christian. Woven into his narrative are the stories of the enslaved couple Eliza and George Harris and their son Harry, who must run away from their former masters to ensure their family is not separated. Alongside their main stories, we encounter other characters, like Evangeline St. Clair, a young and pious white child who demonstrates the power of love and kindness towards all. She develops a friendship with Uncle Tom despite their different races. Likewise, the character of Simon Legree, who serves as the principal protagonist of the story, is emblematic of the evils of slave ownership, beating and mistreating all his enslaved people without mercy. The stories of Uncle Tom and Eliza demonstrate the extent to which slavery dehumanized people and destroyed families. Despite being a pious man, Uncle Tom struggles immensely under the terror inflicted on him by white Southerners as he is sold south to make up for his previous owner's financial difficulties. On the other hand, in an attempt to keep her family together, Eliza, despite having had the favor and promise of her mistress that her son would not be sold, must run away to ensure she and her young son can stay together after she learns that her son will be sold south to settle her master's debts. Thus, through both of their stories, we see firsthand the incredible evil of slavery and what it did to human beings who think, dream, aspire, and love fervently. Stowe drew inspiration for her novel from the real-life experiences of self-emancipated people. Uncle Tom is said to have been crafted from the life of Josiah Henson, who published his own narrative of escaping and living through slavery in his autobiography, The Life of Josiah Henson, Formerly a Slave, Now an Inhabitant of Canada as Narrated by Himself, published in 1849. Henson spent most of his life as an enslaved man in Maryland and Kentucky before running away with his entire family to Canada, where he lived out his days in tranquility and helped other self-emancipated people settle down. In his narrative, Henson describes in detail the horrors of slavery, from watching his entire family be separated when he was a baby, the brutal whippings and physical harm he endured, and how his masters viewed him as subhuman, even after he had done everything for them, treating him like cattle and seeking to sell him to escape their financial difficulties. Uncle Tom and Henson, therefore, follow similar paths, but unlike Uncle Tom, Henson is able to maintain his family together and found freedom, while Uncle Tom represents the sad reality for many enslaved people who met tragic ends because of their brutality of the slave system. Perhaps that is what makes Uncle Tom's Cabin so visceral, 
as the story of these fictional characters, of Uncle Tom and Eliza, George and Harry, were all too real. Stowe masterfully wove the real-life experiences of self-emancipated people into her story. She used books, like the book published by Theodore Dwight Weld and the Grimke sisters, American Slavery as it is, Testimony of a Thousand Witnesses, and she also used interviews she conducted herself with people who escaped slavery. Unsurprisingly, Stowe's book was not well received in the South. Many Southerners accused her of exaggerating the evils of slavery or simply focusing on the worst examples. To prove the legitimacy of the story she told, Stowe wrote A Key to Uncle Tom's Cabin and published it in 1853. This was a non-fiction book that provided a collection of primary documents documenting the cruelties of slavery and the harm committed against the enslaved, detailing real stories of those who were enslaved. This book reached bestseller status, selling 90,000 copies in its first month. While many hailed it as a powerful condemnation of slavery, many Southerners still accused Stowe of over-exaggeration and misrepresentation. Nevertheless, the book's impact cannot be understated, regardless of its critics. Uncle Tom's Cabin was enormously successful. It reached millions across the U.S. and the U.K., bolstering the anti-slavery movement just a few years before the American Civil War, which would bring a final but bloody end to the institution of slavery. In the United States, the book reached bestseller status and became the second best-selling book of the 19th century. It is undeniable that her book also made many Southerners angry, and, in what is as of yet an unproven story, some claim that when Abraham Lincoln and Stowe met for the first time in 1862, he said to her, So this is the little lady who started this great war. These words exemplify how her book was a weapon of anti-slavery sentiment and helped bolster the abolitionist movement. Uncle Tom's Cabin also had a widespread impact on American literature. It essentially promoted the genre of protest literature. We are all probably familiar with books such as The Jungle by Upton Sinclair and Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, which are prime examples of protest literature that sought to bring attention to key issues by writing books, some fiction, others nonfiction. The book also inspired more literature, many written by black writers. The famous Richard Wright, for example, wrote a book called Uncle Tom's Children, composed of many short stories, most of which are fiction, which focus on specific individuals in the Jim Crow South. For example, one story called Big Boy Leaves Home focuses on a child named Big Boy, who, while trying to have fun one summer in Mississippi, witnesses the lynching of all of his friends and finds himself needing to run away north or be lynched himself. Though this story was fiction, Wright was writing a story not altogether dissimilar from that experienced by thousands of black youth in the Jim Crow South, whose innocent excursions resulted in death and violence. Therefore, Uncle Tom's Children adapts those book structure, but this time focuses on the realities of the Jim Crow South. Of course, the biggest impact of Uncle Tom's Cabin was that it managed to tell the story of real people who might otherwise have gone unheard and unseen in history. Therefore, through the power of its words and characters, Uncle Tom's Cabin changed the face of American literature and added power to the anti-slavery movement in a pivotal moment in our nation's history. Uncle Tom's Cabin is available free to read on the Project Gutenberg. The link to access this ebook is available in the video description and on your screen. Please help us by completing a brief survey at the link on your screen and also in the video description. Your feedback will help Nehoff receive funding and help plan future projects. Additionally, please contact Nehoff with any questions or comments, or if you're interested in learning more about the organization. Don't forget to follow us on social media, and we hope to see you at our next presentation. Thank you.